title of the lesson is I Bless the World Because I Bless Myself. So this takes us back to, to, to things we've already been talking about, that the way we bless the world is to bless ourselves. This paragraph six, if it's taken out of context, sounds absolutely so dreadful that nobody would want to go anywhere near this course. If it's taken out of context. Now, hopefully, when we read this now, uh, we have the context of what we've been discussing all day. So it, it, won't, it won't sound quite as horrible as the words may seem to suggest it sounds, or something like that. So this is the bottom page, 354, paragraph 6. Never forget you give but to yourself. Right? And that, of course, is because there's no world out there. Right? Now, again, this metaphysical un underpinning is essential if you can understand the rest of the paragraph. Never forget you give but to yourself, because again, nothing is out there. Who understands what giving means must laugh at the idea of sacrifice. Right? That if I'm to receive love, I have to pay for it. Right? If I'm to be seen as a good person by my family members, by my bosses, by, by God, I must sacrifice. That's because deep down I believe I'm such a miserable sinner that atonement comes through sacrifice. Right? So who understands what giving means, meaning that the inner and the outer are one, there's nothing out there. In fact, there's nothing inside either in terms of the ego because all that's made up. You must laugh at the idea of sacrifice. Nor can he fail to recognize the many forms which sacrifice may take. Sacrifice is the core ego principle, it's core to its thought system, of one or the other. And this is so central to the ego system. Right? It begins with the idea it's God or me. Either perfect love and perfect oneness is the reality, or separation and specialness are the reality. It's one or the other because they can't coexist, they are mutually exclusive. When we chose to believe that the tiny mad idea happened, we chose to believe that one or the other was resolved in our favor. We survived now as a separated individual entity, and God had to disappear. Right? When we took the tiny mad idea seriously, which means we believed it happened. We believed the tiny mad idea, the thought of being separate from God, actually happened. And then we labeled it as sinful. That's, that's a very serious word. Right? That's what Jesus means in a very important section on special relationships when he says, if you knew your special relationship was a triumph over God, would you want it? If you knew your special relationship was a triumph over God, would you want it? Because it is. Right? When we developed a special relationship with our ego, which is the first and the only true special relationship, everything else follows from that, we believed we triumphed over God. It was one or the other. Right. Then as the dream begins to evolve, we believe God will somehow rise from the grave in which we put him and will come storming back following the principle of one or the other, and he will take the life we stole from him, leaving us lifeless, i.e. dead, and he now has life. It's one or the other. Right? That's what's in back of that, the terrifying passage in the manual that deals with all this and says, an angry father pursues his guilty son, kill or be killed. That's the ultimate expression of the principle of one or the other, kill or be killed, and that's the exact line. An angry father pursues his guilty son. God pursues his guilty son, and God will win because he's God. Kill or be killed. Right. That's the sacrifice. Right. That, and, and then what happens is to stave off the inevitable, which is God's destruction of us, we make a bargain with him. Remember, this is our dream, so we can dream it any way we want. Right. This has nothing to do with the true God, absolutely nothing to do with the true God, who knows nothing about this. How could the all and the everything know about nothing? But in our deluded insanity, I distorted thinking, this now becomes reality, and so we now make a bargain with God to stop him from destroying us. And we say, yes, I, I sinned against you, I'm really sorry, I'll make it up to you. What do you want? Right? And then the God we made up tells us what he wants. He wants our devotion, he wants our love, he wants us to obey all the rituals. 
you know, he- every religion has a different god with different, uh, reli- with different rituals and different codes, but they're all about sacrifice. In order to pay God back for our sin, we have to sacrifice. Right? That's why the opening chapter, excuse me, the opening section in chapter 3 is called Atonement Without Sacrifice. Because the ego's version of atonement is atonement with sacrifice. That's the Judeo-Christian view of salvation. Whether you're a Jew or a Christian, God demands that you suffer. The whole story of Jesus in the Gospels is taken from the suffering servant songs in Isaiah, four songs in Isaiah. It's all about God sends his servant, who's pure and innocent and sinless, to suffer and die so the sins of the children of Israel will be redeemed. That's in Isaiah, century, written centuries before the Gospels are written. When you take the Jesus myth, it's the exact same story, except now it's in, quote, Christian form. It's all about sacrifice. Someone has to sacrifice so God's will for vengeance, insatiable will for vengeance, will be satisfied. And that's how we live. If I'm to enjoy a weekend, I have to work for five days. If I'm to enjoy a vacation, I have to work 50 weeks out of the year or 48 weeks out of the year or whatever. We have to sacrifice. If I'm to get you to love me, I have to give you something. I have to sacrifice something in me so you would love me. Otherwise, you won't love me. It's all about sacrifice. It's all about one or the other. An advanced teacher of God looks at this and smiles sweetly and says, how silly. End of story. That's what's meant by this next incredible sentence. He laughs as well. So the he would be the advanced teacher of God who knows now how silly all this is. It's not one or the other. It's together or not at all. He laughs as well at pain and loss at sickness and at grief, at poverty, starvation, and at death. So you could see somebody wants to make trouble with this course or for this course, but take the sense out of context and you see where where you go with it. It only makes sense when when you realize you're talking about an advanced teacher who's outside of the dream, who looks at the dream and smiles sweetly and says, this is all silly. Nothing in this world is given power to take away the love and the peace that's inside of you. Nothing. He laughs as well at pain and loss, at sickness and at grief, at poverty, starvation, and at death. These are all very heavy, consequential things in this world. These are very, very painful effects in the world. But when you bring them back to their cause, which is taking the tiny mad idea seriously, then they will disappear. Then you realize it's a joke to think that time could come to circumvent eternity. It is not a joke on the battleground. It is not a joke in the world of bodies. It is only a joke in the world of the mind. That's where the advanced teacher of God lives. That's what makes him or her advanced. He recognizes sacrifice remains the one idea that stands behind them all, and in his gentle laughter are they healed. Here's that phrase, gentle laughter, again. He recognizes, the advanced teacher recognizes sacrifice one or the other. Someone lives, another dies. Someone has to die and suffer to pay God back for the terrible things we did. So God will have mercy on us and not condemn us to hell. Sacrifice remains the one idea that stands behind them all, all the forms of suffering. And in his gentle laughter are they healed. It's not that the effects are healed, but the effects of guilt are healed, the effects of fear are healed, all the effects of specialness are healed. Now, again, this does not mean that you don't do things to remedy the ills of the world, whether on an individual level or a collective level. It means, but you d- you, it means you don't want to do it coming from your ego. Because then you'll believe in suffering and sacrifice, and you'll believe suffering in this world is real. You'll make the world real, and there's no hope there. Because you've taken the tiny mad idea seriously. The advanced teacher of God does not take it seriously. And from his gentle laughter, he calls to everyone from where he is, calls everyone to participate in that gentle laughter by joining with him or her on the level of the mind. That's the only place you could find peace. Otherwise, there is literally no hope at all. 